In 1995, my next guest created a traveling museum that keeps Black History Month going all year long. The Black History 101 Mobile Museum contains more than 7,000 original artifacts representing the African American experience. The museum tours the country visiting schools, colleges and universities, conferences, cultural events and churches. The items in the museum date from slavery to the modern day hip hop culture. They include an old drinking fountain sign, vintage magazines, a KKK hood, slave shackles, a document signed by Malcolm X, and much, much more. Joining me now is the museum's founder and curator, Khalid El Hakim. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. You know what? I am fascinated by this. I, I can't believe I've missed it all these years. You have to tell us the story of how you came up with the idea to do this. Well, originally I came up with the idea to do it um, after attending the Million Man March in 1995. Okay. Prior to that, I was just a collector of African American memorabilia. Um, after taking a class with uh, Dr. David Pilgrim of the Jim Crow Museum, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a student at Ferris State University back in the early 90s, um, I started collecting after taking his intro to sociology class. And, um, and he, he just had a very powerful way of teaching about racism in America. He would bring in original artifacts from the Jim Crow era every session of our class and had us deal with um, those issues of race in a very unique type of way. So I was inspired by that and started collecting shortly after uh, taking his class. But um, it was 1995, the Million Man March, that this idea for a mobile museum uh, came into play. Well, I mean, on, on behalf of people who value the educational importance of this, I want to say thank you. You're a shining light. Um, so describe it. Describe what it is and the experience yes. that people have um, with the artifacts. Absolutely. So I set up, um, well, obviously I can't take 7,000 artifacts on the road with me. So I set up um, tabletop exhibits, uh, okay. about 10 tables, 150 artifacts, um, and they're thematic. Uh, right now I'm doing an exhibit called The Three M's. It's, um, uh, focused on Martin Luther King, Motown, and Michael Jackson. Okay. Um, so um, so we, we take these artifacts out on the road uh, and people come through the exhibit. Sometimes we have guest lecturers. Um, over the years, Professor Griff from Public Enemy has toured with me uh, probably 90% of the places I've traveled, but we've had people like Jessica Hare Moore and The Last Poets, Proof from D12, mm -hmm. uh, come along on the road with us, Fred Hampton Jr. and some some other folks. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a experience that people um, find very memorable and informative and really appreciate. I think you're being a little humble here. This this has gone to what? How many countries? How many states? Well, people call you we, the Schomburg of the well, hip-hop culture. Yeah, we, we've gone quite a few places. Uh, it's been 27 states, mm -hmm. over 300 institutions um, in two countries. <laughs> and we, we've been to Canada <laughs> and the United States. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. What, what, uh, what are the most popular artifacts like you know you know there's got to be seven or eight things you pull out and people are going to have a, a yeah, so visceral reaction it's a it's a um it's a very diverse collection of memorabilia so um there's shackles from slavery mm -hmm. in the collection we have original lynching photographs that people find obviously very disturbing mm -hmm. um but on the other extreme um we have a huge archive of hip-hop memorabilia um like and, what oh wow so we have um Old Vibe magazines, Source magazines, autographs from everybody from African Bambada to KRS One to Chuck D. Um, we have, let's see, yeah, just it's just a variety of things, albums, cassettes. Where do you get this stuff? Is it stuff that you get from auctions? Is it donated? Yeah, so I, I tell people um, if they ever watch the TV show American Pickers, I'm I'm the black version of that. Okay. <laughs> so I'm I'm digging constantly, going to flea markets and garage sales and estate sales. Um, I've gone to auctions. Um, I got actually got the KKK memorabilia from an auction up in Howell, Michigan. Um, of Robert course. Miles with the Grand Dragon up there, and his family put his things up for sale. So I went up there and got some things. Uh, out of his collection. But you know, just a variety of different places around the country. Um, I worked in the hip hop industry for 20 years as well. So being able to travel with different hip hop artists around the country and um, overseas uh, gave me an opportunity to dig through some places that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Mm. Well, I, I'm sure you've heard that um, President Donald Trump has had some challenges with understanding Frederick Douglass and the yeah, purpose thinks, of the Civil he War. He thinks Ben Carson is Frederick Douglass. <laughs> <laughs> My question, though, is 
Um, uh, talk to me about opportunities you've had to present this to um, audiences that might not be as astute when it comes to African American history. Um, maybe they're white audiences, maybe they're you know people who don't you know live around black people or know black history. What opportunities right. do you have to show them and educate them with your artifacts? Well, one of the great things about this being a mobile museum is that it can go anywhere. Um, a lot of the places I get invited, just based upon being uh, having a uh, presence on the internet, I've get, been getting calls from all around the country, from you know states like Iowa or Oklahoma or Nebraska, and we we go out there and people uh, generally speaking appreciate the work. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it provides the opportunity for us to have some real conversations about some issues that we have to talk about. So, And, and you've been doing this for a number of years. I know there are some stories where you can tell us about the most memorable times uh, watching people respond yes. to the artifacts, you know. Yeah, so um, one, one story that sticks out uh, quite a bit is a young woman, uh, we were in Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm and a young uh, white female student walked through, we were at a college there, um, and she started crying. And, and, that, and we, we do have people who you know, have a variety of different emotions as they walk through the exhibit, but hers was just kind of different. Um, and, you know, and I just watched her, I didn't engage her at first, um, but she got comfortable and came over to me and told me um, she was looking at the Klan memorabilia and just, just started bawling. And she um, confided and, and expressed that her, she sees that stuff every day. She said her father and her grandfather are Klansmen. Wow. Yeah, so it was, it was a very um, emotional uh, response that she had. But she said that she didn't, um, she, you know, she didn't agree with them, but it was just a part of her lived experience, something that she saw every day. So, um, so that's one thing that I've, that I've learned too doing this work is that you realize that people have their own lived experiences, you know. So the idea of this mobile museum is um, ideally to create a shared experience that people can have in this space, and then for people to have conversations. And then, you know, after you know these conversations, you know, we have some some place, some point of reference to come back to, to have other you know conversations or you know accountability as well. Because once you know better, then you you should be able to you know. Yeah, uh, so what's What's your favorite item or items? Right. <laughs> and um, what do you hope every person who comes into contact with your mobile museum takes away? Yes. So my favorite items, and they change, but my favorite items right now, I really love the hip hop memorabilia, mm -hmm. uh, simply because that was the era that I grew up in, um, coming out, you know, growing up in the 80s in Detroit. Um, just remembering Public Enemy and KRS-One and Queen Latifah. Um, a very good friend of mine who's a hip hop photographer, he's actually one, one of the legendary hip hop photographers, Ernie Panicoli, uh, has documented hip hop from the early 70s up until current times. And uh, he recently uh, donated some photographs of you know, a young Jay-Z, a Lil Wayne at 16, and you know, Tupac and Biggie. So I have these phenomenal photographs that um, I have from him, and those are some of my favorites right now. And see, you could just put this up around your house and look at it every day, but you're yes. sharing it with the yes. world. What do you want people to take away? So the takeaway is that um, to recognize that we've made some incredible contributions in spite of Jim Crowism, in spite of the lynchings, in spite of slavery, we've made some incredible contributions. Yeah. So part of the collection are documents signed by historical figures like Mary McLeod Bethune, uh, Carter G. Woodson, George Washington Carver, Booker T. Washington, and just other greats like that. So I, I want people to get a sense that uh, we, we need to do more research, mm -hmm. that we need to dig a little bit deeper, that we need to remember legacy and remember that we come from a great people and that we can make contributions uh, regardless of what the times are. I got a minute left. I do want you to talk about your book yes. and maybe the next time we can see this exhibit here in our area. Absolutely. Talk to me about the book. Tell so the everybody book, so yes. we can get it. So the book <laughs> is called The Center of the Movement, Collecting Hip Hop Memorabilia. Mm -hmm. uh, the book is um, a, a documentation of different hip hop artifacts I've collected over the past 20 years as I travel with different artists that I've worked with. Uh, but it's also interviews from different hip hop collectors and them telling their stories um, about how they collected uh, hip hop memorabilia. Phenomenal. When might Metro Detroiters or Michigan residents see this mobile museum soon? 
Uh, we're looking at doing some tours in the, uh, in August and July of this year. So we're, we're getting dates down right now. So we can look, uh, where's the website? We check for the dates. Yes, uh, the Black History 101 Mobile Museum .com. Or you can go to Facebook, Black History 101 Mobile Museum .com. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of new, yes. <laughs> new fans. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much.